Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Martin. Fancy seeing you. Very good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world, watching another edition of Something for the Weekend. So what have we got today, Jonathan? We have our entire range, or most of our entire range, of SWR power meters, all the way from Daiwa uh, through uh, Maidal and SI and uh, Diamond right at the very end there. Sort of a, a meter showcase. It's uh, it's antenna season. Mm, it is, sure isn't it? Aware, Martin, mm. and uh, it might be the uh, the opportunity where you're putting up new antennas, and you really need to sort of see what your antenna is doing. And uh, this is. I think some people th rely on the metering in the equipment, um, and yes, it works. But to do the job properly, and for not a massive investment, you might swap your wireless around. But generally, you won't swap your meter or your power supply. No. I think. They, they, are the, they are the constants in most shacks. Mm. Um, so let's start with uh, the diamond right on, on the, uh, our, your left, our right. Um, we've, there's two versions, but they both are very similar. So it's the SX20 and the SX40. The only difference between the two is the frequency range. Uh, the SX40, which is the one that Martin's got there, is your VHF, UHF meter, uh, covering 144 to 470 megs. And then the SX20 is HF, which is 1.8 megs up to a uh, sorry, uh, 3.5 megs uh, to 150 megs. So you will get two meters out of it as well, but obviously primarily designed for uh, for HF and, and six meters. Nice and lightweight too, and of course it's got the Daiwa cross needle system. But when I first saw the cross needles, I thought, well, how the hell does that work? Because normally you've got um, normal meters with, and you have to press the button between SWR and power meter. The advantage of cross needles as you can see, is you can see the power and reflective power at the same time. As where these needles cross over, they're, they're all individually calibrated. Um, and that's the advantage of using cross needle meters. That's why Dyer have stuck with it. And very few people have, because it's obviously more expensive to have two mechanical movements in the uh, meter. So that's why they're very, very good. And they start at um, not an awful lot of money for, for a good accurate ham radio uh, meter. Uh, talking dial, should we talk about the two, yes. the two big ones on the end? Yes. Well, we have got the smaller one missing, uh, but there's three versions essentially of the, the CA901. We've only got two out here. Uh, that one is the, the VHF UHF one, 140 megs through to 525. And uh, the nice thing about that is it's got N type connectors on the back, hence VN. Um, it's uh, also nice and big. It's one of those, I mean, both in the 901 series, yeah. it is huge in terms of size. So you very easily see it um, if it's maybe off on a, uh, a higher shelf from where you're operating the radio. And also you can handle quite a bit of power as well through them. They're, uh, uh, the, I think the, uh, that one is... Uh, 200 watts on the VHF, 140 to 525 megs. Yeah, and then there's two versions of the HF one. One is for a kilowatt, and then there's also the HP3, which is for three kilowatts. So uh, uh, can handle a lot of power. And the other nice thing about the HF one, the HP version, or the HP3, is it's got uh, PEP on it as well. So it's got PEP hold and... Uh, as indeed this one has, yeah. Excellent. Mm. So that's, that's the advantage of the dials. If you want to see accurately what your SSB power is, uh, you need the PEP hold. These come off if you don't like them, but the advantage is, um, yes, they have got rubber feet on the back, but plastic on the front. If you put this on, it's not going to slide around. I, I, I always keep mine on. I've got one of these at home. Um, and the other advantage is with the bigger meters, you've got this backlit um, with the socket there. And yes, you can turn the uh, light on and off. So if you wire this up to your low voltage output um, of your power supply, when you turn the power supply off to turn the shack equipment off, this will go off as well. You don't have to mess about going around the back and turning the uh, switch on and off. But again, cross needle metering. And you've actually got a mirror, if you can see that in the, in the display, that's so you can absolutely look accurately that you're actually looking at the cross needles. So there they are, and yes, that's uh, dive meters are very, very good indeed. They are. Um, also uh, available at the moment, the minor, we've had, we're out of stock of these for a long while, they're back oh, in they now, are. the yes. SWR006. Uh, so this is HF, VHF, UHF, you've got two sensors in it, uh, so you've got uh, two sets of uh, SO239 connectors on the back, yeah. and you just simply switch between the sensors uh, so you can easily decide where you're wanting to measure. But you can leave it hooked in, you can leave it hooked in on, on your HF radio and your VHF, UHF radio. All at the same time, it's not going to do any damage. Again, backlight as well, uh, yep. so you can easily, as Martin says with the diwas, plug it into your power supply, the, uh, the low current output. <clears throat> Again, a, a nice, simple to use. I mean, everyone has probably owned one of these at some point in their amateur radio career. I know I certainly have. 
and, and top his... band you know on one port on this port you've got 160 meters to um two meters or in fact 1.8 to 160 and as jonathan said on the other port you've got two meters and 70 cents so 140 to 525 megs they didn't put in type <clears throat> connectors on you can obviously buy an adapter shouldn't really do that but SOT39 ports on both uh, inputs. But it, what I like about it is you can have both sets of equipment connected at the same time. You haven't got to start messing about and unplugging it, or indeed get another meter. Exactly. exactly. Very, very, very good value too. Uh, talking very good value, mm. the, uh, move on to the NIST like size. The 503s. Yeah, so we've got the 503 and the 501 available <clears> now. <throat> oh, sorry, the 103, mm. the model number right. So the 503, uh, we've been doing for a little while. Uh, HF, EHF, UHF, it's sort of the same frequency coverage as the Mydel uh, SWR. Uh, 006, uh, but with the uh, DG503, it is a digital um, display. So you can very clearly see your forward and reflected power as well as the SWR on the screen. It lights up with a nice backlight of orange. Yeah, that's and good. And it's very easy to see. You can spot it from across the room very easily, should you need to. And what uh, power rating on this is 200 watts, incidentally, because I can see people saying, you didn't tell me the power rating. 200 watts on this, and you select which port you want from the front, which I like. So you haven't got to go around the back with the slightly cheaper analog version, because yes, you have to select the port there. And again, this one is also 520 and 200 watts. This one is um, um, 200 watts all the way up, all the way through. You haven't got to actually select the power rating, no. which is another distinct advantage. That really is my favorite out of all these. I just think digital display metering has come onto its own now. So that's the uh, 503 and indeed the 103, 103 really, isn't so it? Yeah. HF only, so uh, it's uh, uh, 1.6 to 60 megs, uh, but handles up to 1200 watts. So if you've got a nice linear amplifier that you want to accurately see what your output power is, then uh, the 103 is the one to go for. Yeah, so two power ranges, 0 to 300, so you've got a 100 or a 200 watt rig like a um, FTDX, 101 or something like that, um, you've got one range, if you're running a linear, to switch it over and then you're 300 to 1.2 kilowatts. So again, digital display, exactly the same as the other one, but only one port, because it's only meant for HF. Only for HF, yeah. Uh, and six meters. And so, uh, I was just say, yeah, six. And then finally, uh, we've got the, the little diddy one. The little diddy one. Uh -huh. So this is the RS70, and there's two versions. There's the RS70 and the RS50, but they both look the same. Uh, one covers HF and six. The other covers two meters and seventy cents. Uh, so the RS70 is the HF version. Uh, it uh, can either run off a micro USB connector on the side, uh, or you can put two double, uh, sorry, two AAA batteries into it. So if you want to take <coughs> it portable, mm. if you've got a 705 and uh, you want to have it in the, the, the backpack with that, uh, then it's absolutely perfect. SO239s, it's nice and easy. The only distinct thing to mention is that if you put rechargeable cells into it, uh, it won't recharge it off the micro USB. No, which is, we, we have spoken to the factory about this and they are working on it, but you've just reminded me, I'm gonna kick them again, because I actually said that to them about two years ago. And this little weenie device will handle up to 200 watts, ideal for portable mobile use. You can have it in the shack and actually it comes with, I think, um, Velcro strips. You can stick it to the front of your shack. Yeah. Um, there are other meters. The full range is available on our website, of course. Um, I'd like to mention a big thank you to everybody that subscribed to and, and um, donated to um, Gina Venner, uh, my um, workshop manager, Steve Venner's um, page for cancer research. Um, Steve um, set a target of 250 pounds. Thanks to some very generous people out there amongst you. Uh, it's well over 2,000 pounds now in only a week and a bit. So um, thank you very much for that. Uh, Gina was, uh, 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 has gone upstairs a lot, uh, earlier this week. Um, so our prayers and thoughts are still with Steve and, her f and um, his family and indeed Gina. So thank you very much for being so generous. Uh, on behalf of Steve, he really does thank you. So that was a lovely thing to do. And it's still open, so if you, if you missed it, uh, go on to uh, last week's video. I think Henry will put a link down below and you can still uh, donate if you wish. Yes. Jonathan? Uh, absolutely. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, of course, uh, the live video will be out tomorrow. Tony is on that duty this weekend. Uh, so expect a live video from Tony. I'm not sure what he's going to do, but I'm not no, sure. No, no idea. No, no idea. But uh, I'm sure he'll have a walk around the, the showroom. And of course, it's your opportunity. If you're unable to get to us in person, 
uh, then it's your opportunity to have a virtual visit to the store. Uh, so Come on down. Yeah. As they say. Because we're open and it's sunny and uh, you haven't been here for ages, so pop in. We'd love to see you and uh, welcome you into the store. Yes, social distancing and all that is still in operation. Um, but if you haven't been out for a while, come down. You're very welcome. We'd love to see you. Um, it's fully open now. Absolutely, of course. And uh, you can see all of the meters, as Martin says, online, hamradio.co.uk. And of course, if anything here takes your fancy, you can always give us a call 0345 2300 599. Still after the used equipment, got the used gear, give us a ring. We're desperately looking for more used kit. I'm looking around the shelves, a bit empty. So please ring us with your used kit. If you're sitting around, just sitting there, you want to turn it into money or part exchange. Give uh, Jonathan, Tony, all the sales gang sitting behind me a call today and we'll sort out a good price for you. Get it collected and get money into your bank or that new toy you've been waiting for. All the best. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.